Welcome everybody to a new episode of Flower Circus Talks. Today uh, we have a very special episode. We have the young ones. Uh, and with the young ones, you think you will not have any problems uh, or technical problems because they understand what a computer is and, and how it works. But uh, unfortunately, we're still waiting uh, on Kevin uh, to log in uh, because he had some technical problems. Uh, but we're here already with, uh, with Wouter, uh, Ryan and Casey. So uh, let's quickly uh, get them into the live stream. Uh, let's start with, uh, with the US. Let's start with uh, Ryan and Casey. Welcome. Hey, hello. Thank you. So, can you tell a little bit more about uh, yourself uh, for the people who don't know you yet? Sure. My name is Ryan Black. Uh, I'm the marketing director here for Jeff Fresh Flowers. I'm, I'm Casey, Casey Black, Ryan's brother. Um, I'm a sales captain here, assistant sales captain here, sorry. And I'm um, doing sales also with a little bit of buying. Okay, you just got promoted, right? Yes, yes. Right, you did. Casey's been working his way up the ranks. Right. Start, just like the rest of us, we all start in the warehouse. And we work our way up, learn the, learn the side of the business the right way. Yeah. Earn our ranks, and then he's been working hard for a long time, and now he's now he's moving up the ranks. Okay, yeah, that's great. But it's also great that yeah, you work in every aspect of the company, so you know what's going on everywhere. That's uh, that's really oh, yeah. important. I think. Yeah, no, it's really important. We we both worked our ways uh, throughout all, all, most of the sides of the industry, Casey specifically, between um, managing the warehouse, the trucking lines, everything. Uh, and driving, the whole deal, pulling boxes. Yeah. It really helps because we still do it now. Yeah. We're still always, you know, last minute grabbing a box, sometimes throw it in the car, drop it over there before the cutoff. Yeah. You know, Whatever it needs. Yeah, family businesses, there's not, you don't just have one job, you know, you're, you're working all the jobs, whatever they need you to do. Yeah, that's that's totally true. Uh, well, Cookie Noah is saying a good afternoon, gentlemen. Hey, hey, yes, Let's uh, quickly get uh, Walter into the live stream as well. Uh, see what he has to uh, to tell. Walter, welcome. Hi. Good afternoon. So, hey. can you tell a bit uh, more about yourself, uh, Walter? Yes, of course. Well, uh, the young people are. Uh, uh, are talking about uh, starting at the bottom. Well, I did it myself. I'm, uh, I was born and raised between the flowers. Actually, my grandfather was already a grower. And yeah. uh, since I was 13, 14, I uh, worked at the flower auction in Aalsmeer. And now uh, I'm working as a market uh, manager at uh, Royal van Zander, breeder of cut flowers, Alsmeria, Jandemann, Bouvardia, Statis. And uh, I'm now traveling, uh, actually, uh, yeah, almost all the world uh, to promote our flowers. Are you still traveling? Yeah, that's a bit, a bit of a harsh thing now, but uh, like live streams and uh, Instagram and uh, Facebook, we uh, try to uh, be on every place, but then a little bit different than, uh, than we used to. Sure. Yeah. So I think that's the main, it's, it's the same thing for you guys. It's been, uh, I mean, it's, uh, to see growers, to see uh, expos and everything this year is a very bad year. Yeah, we try to visit farms, uh, the growers, suppliers. Um, my father is flying around the country all year round, multiple times a year. He's in Ecuador visiting our farm um, and then trade shows, everything like that. We do many yeah. trade shows throughout the year, exhibitions. And it's all been on pause for, for the last six months for sure. Yeah, yeah. I think our host is out, but uh, we can uh, can continue oh, yeah. talking. <laughs> Welcome to Flower Circus. Flower Circus, yeah. yeah. Actually, last year I, I, I was at Jet Fresh for a second when I uh, visited the uh, Miami uh, Fair, the SAF exhibition. What'd you so, think? Uh, Did you get a good vibe? Did you get a yeah, vibe? I mean, it's a, it's a great great to be there uh, to see what's happening there. I mean, you see everything on Instagram, Facebook, and, uh, and everything, but it's nice to see the office and to talk a little bit with the people over there. Yeah. So, uh, who did Kevin say? Kevin just so wrote. Kevin's responding, yeah. I have this 60 minute rule Facebook is coming. Facebook is charging him for 60 minutes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go Facebook Pro. Yeah, I don't know. I think uh, Jordan uh, has the same uh, issue at the moment. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> But how's business at the moment? Yeah, it's been it's been uh, it's been different, but it's been good. Uh, it definitely has its moments. Right now, um, we're 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 working hard, just like everybody else is trying to trying to make everybody happy. 
Um, yeah, it's really different than normal, but it seems to see, you know, you find different niches to stay busy and stay relevant. Yeah. And, you know, it seems to be working, you know, and especially with more so the florists, the local florists seem to be really thriving right now. Um, yeah, they're, they're really grinding through it. Because, you know, you can't go see somebody in person, so you're sending them flowers. So, you know, so the local floors, the mom and pop shops, you know, I yeah. think have been saved from all of this. Yeah, yeah it's actually a time that you can help your uh, clients as well more than uh, than you uh, normally can. I mean, you, uh, right. you can provide them some information, you can, can provide them some help in a different way. That's what we see with our clients as well. We can provide them with information about how uh, the market is here. Exactly. But also how uh, logistics are i mean that's a big issue especially from from colombia kenya and um so we can help them in that way as well so yeah yeah it's, exactly it seems like there's just multiple challenges every day yeah. you know with different it's if it's not one yeah. thing it's another thing whether it's yeah. production of the flowers or getting the flowers here or getting the flowers cleared yeah. through, through usda because not enough hey welcome back Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we took over the show. Yeah, no, we can't do anymore. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so now I've got no sound. So let's try it one more time. We hear you, just so you know. Yeah, we do hear you, John. Mostly, that's not a really, really positive thing, but <laughs> we've got sound. Then we're back again. It's like a real circus disappearing. <laughs> 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 Unbelievable! That's the the joy of living in Ukraine, and uh, sometimes the, <laughs> the internet goes goes somewhere you don't want it. <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> yeah. So, what are we talking about? Actually, what we can, how the market is at the moment, um, how we can help our clients, and how everything is going at the moment. Yeah. I mean, here in Holland, the restrictions are getting uh, a little bit uh, more tight. I'm at home at the moment. Only yep. uh, if you need to tra travel or to go by car, you need, you can go. But otherwise, uh, the advice to stay home. So it's getting a little bit tighter now. Yeah, Kevin actually is telling uh, he has some problems, so he will probably not uh, he cannot join. So, mm -hmm. but Kevin, you can uh, you at least you can uh, uh, put some comments uh, in. So if you want to join uh, like that in the discussion, uh, please do so. Yeah. Uh, well, Cookie is saying the, the young flower guns. Uh, Bre Alison Bradley is saying, uh, John, were you late? Yeah, Alison, uh, you, you taught me well. So, uh, <laughs> uh, And Kirsten van Dijk is asking, how are your projections for the holiday season? Maybe, uh, yeah, right, in case you can tell uh, your expectations for the US market. And uh, Wouter, what, uh, you can say something about the European market. Sure. Well, the US market is pretty interesting because Every state's a little different. Everybody's got a different situation going on as far as reopening re and versus staying closed, uh, different outbreaks all around the country. Um, but overall, um, we're expecting this, the holiday season to be to be good, to be busy. Um, people are giving flowers and plants as gifts more and more, especially with social distancing. Um, yeah. so we are expecting a good, good, a good holiday season. Yeah, I think if the demand is gonna be high, but I think as far as filling the production or Filling the orders is going to be super tough this year yeah. um, because it seems there's different challenges every day with either a farm is sold or, you know, they're not able to attend to the farm because of restrictions. You know, yeah. it's something different all the time. Yeah. You know, airspace, it's it's going to be tough, I think. It's going to be a grind. And we yeah. supply it from all around the world. So, like, luckily we have more than one basket to grab from. But... It's definitely there's a different challenge with every country coming different, different product is something is something to think about to worry about. Yeah. And uh, Walter, what about Europe? Yeah, actually the the, the logistics uh, problems uh, we know that from here as well. Uh, we have several countries that we are uh, that they who are buying our products. So like uh, now for first of November is a very important day here in Europe, uh, a flower uh, holiday, and uh, that is going to be. Um, with the restrictions in Europe, it's going to be tricky. And we hear some positive things, we hear negative things. So we're, yeah, it's going to be, uh, yeah, hectic. <laughs> and yeah. Um, also, but with the with the, uh, the production in Holland, I think it's very good. Uh, 
growers can sell their flowers well uh, in general. Uh, like uh, growers in Kenya, in Colombia, with the logistics, it's very, very hard. And also uh, when you're exporting to uh, uh, a location where you need to fly your flowers, uh, like for example, Jet Fresh <laughs> from Holland, then it's, uh, then it's, then it's harder. Yeah, you can, you can feel that uh, in some companies. Yeah. yeah. And further on for Christmas, I heard from, uh, from several of my designers or the flower circus designers, they expected to have a very good Christmas. A lot of people normally traveling abroad, especially the richer people uh, going on holidays and they're saying, OK, we're staying home, but we don't have any decoration at home. So you need to decorate the whole house. We need everything. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, for that, it, uh, I think for Europe, that looks good. Yeah. Uh, I invited you, of course, uh, also for your view on the on the flower market and how it's going to be in uh, a few years. I mean, uh, you're the young ones. You need to take over soon. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I wanted to, to, to yeah to give you some some statements and see uh, what you think about it. Uh, now we see that uh, yeah a, a lot of things are going more and more digital. Uh, it's going to be all digital or is going to be personal contact? What do you think? I think the personal contact is always going to be relevant. Um, the digital is very, very important working the way up the marketing. Like I feel like here with us, at least we're super blessed with our marketing team. You know, my brother, you know, the, the way I could just go on and send a quick picture of the exact product that I have to my customer while I'm on the phone and they can confirm it just like that, you know, and then just, they have ways to see different things that I don't have the time to always send to everybody because you guys know how many different flowers and varieties are always coming around, you know, yeah. so the digital is super important, but I think the personal contact is always very relevant and, you know, it's always important, you know, because especially with how many different people are competing to sell the same type of flower, you know, so when you have that relationship with somebody, you know, sometimes you don't even talk to them, you don't sell them a box, but you hang up the phone laughing and it was just a good yeah. comment, you know. Yeah, providing them with the right information and the right uh, the right um, or tools for them to be successful is very important as far as the digital side. People are smart, you know, they go online, they look for what they like, they look for what they want, um, and then you could easily give them that option, which we do both. We have Comet Sales and K2K platforms for online sales where they can log in and buy, uh, buy directly through the online system, but it also works well to have a salesperson know what the market conditions are, know what flowers are hard to come in this week. And then they can give you substitutions. They can give you, you know, things that you need to look out for. Um, having that trust and that, that salesperson there is, has been a huge part of our business model and it's, it's going to remain that way for years to come. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what do you think, Walter? Yeah, actually, I, uh, I agree uh, on that. Uh, I think the only channel is um, becoming more, uh, more and more common. I mean, uh, last uh, month we did a little bit, uh, or a little bit, we did more online, like storytelling, explaining our product. Mm -hmm. That's very well. I think it's very good for the people to understand uh, what a product is, uh, what the background of a product is, and uh, how to use it. Um, but also, I think one of the main things that we miss now here uh, in Holland is, um, is, is the relationship. I mean, uh, we have a maximum of four persons that you can, uh, can invite in your house. Yeah, as a restriction, and uh, the, the thing you miss is like to hug somebody, to to talk with everybody, to have a yeah, to have a laugh, to uh, to uh, drink a beer. I mean, it's here Friday afternoon, so to drink a beer, and um, <laughs> and just to enjoy yourself. I mean, uh, flowers is also something that like, like uh, family businesses are common. Uh, people know each other. It's a very small world, and I I miss the being part of that world uh, physically. Yeah. 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 So what what are your what is your opinion about all the, the exhibitions or the trade shows? I mean, they try to go online or some of them trying to go online. Uh, is it going to replace the normal trade shows and exhibitions? No, absolutely or, or not. No, I cannot believe that. I mean, it's, it's very, um, it's all business talk. Yeah. In a, in, a, in a meeting, in an expo, it's all business talk. So you don't have, uh, the best things, uh, in, in Expo is that you're going to dinner tonight at the evenings and uh, to have a, have a drink, have a laugh, to yeah. talk about um, everything what's going on, and that's not something that you can replace by a live stream or uh, or 
something like that. Yeah. Yeah, you do touch. Yeah, 100% yeah. agree. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's for sure. And uh, but do you think that all the live streams and things like uh, like we're doing now uh, will it disappear once uh, the uh, exhibitions are back, or will it be? A uh, bit I, of I think it also like if you are if you now visit a client, it, it is more it's it's worth more than before because otherwise you say hey I I will Zoom or Teams I don't know Skype yeah. and we have to talk about business. But if you visit now and you you are being Physically there, I, I think it will be worth more than before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's for sure. Uh, Alison is agreeing as well. No way uh, will trade fairs uh, stop, John. Online is a farce. Uh, <laughs> I, I know you like hugging, uh, Alison. Uh, <laughs> so for you, it's especially very difficult, uh, all <laughs> the online things. Uh, and it's easier to come later to a trade show, and uh, when you have something online live, it's uh, it's difficult to be in time uh, for some people. <laughs> yeah, but, um, one of the things that that uh, our flower chain is quite long. Uh, Wouter, you're at the beginning as a breeder. Yeah. And, uh, if we look at the Dutch model, then we have the the growers, we have the auction, we have the flower exporters. Then we've got the importers, you like, like uh, Jetfresh. Then we have maybe another wholesale. Then we have the florist. We have uh, the florist. So it's quite a long chain. And and with other, in yeah, the florist. But with other industries, we show we see that it's going more directly uh, from uh, a factory or things like that. Will that happen as well? What what's your opinion about it? Well, my opinion about it is that you can see uh, already some changes. Um, in my opinion, there are three uh, segments of, uh, of flower change chains, uh, like the, the wholesale, uh, like with Jetfresh, um, uh, for example. Uh, you have the retail, so um, the retail is, in my opinion, the supermarkets, and you have uh, uh, the e-commerce uh, uh, chain. And I think yeah. in the e-commerce chain and in the retail chain, they are already buying direct growers. Um, they uh, have their own logistics centers and they have their own florists to provide uh, e-commerce bouquets. Uh, so I think the change already started. And uh, if we see predictions from, for example, uh, we have a bank who is doing a lot of uh, predictions um, and forecast uh, that the e-commerce will grow. and, and you see, actually, the, the COVID crisis uh, speeded that process up. So, yeah, yeah, I think I don't know the percentage exactly. It's also a little bit short to uh, in, in a few months to calculate that. But I think we have um, in, in the forecast in 2025, it's 30 percent, 30 percent, 30 percent of every change. So that means that there is a big change coming up. Yeah, yeah, it depends, of course, per country, but uh, of course. I think yeah, uh, if you look in Europe, the UK is is quite big already with uh, with sales uh, via supermarkets. Yeah. Uh, yeah, bigger I think than a lot of people. I think a lot of people want to go direct, but also at the same time, at least for us here in Miami, um, we're always last minute. We kind of like firemen, you know, we're always putting up the fires of what orders didn't get filled, what orders got delayed or stuck where, you know. Yeah. And that's why you you know we're always running around last minute. You know, because we are trying to get out that last box that didn't make it for you. And then you yeah. also have a lot of your local florist, you know, that rely on Miami or rely on that wholesaler to come through for them weekly. You know, yeah. where they can't go pick it up at the airport or get their consolidation. Yeah, you made yeah. a good point. You said how long the supply chain is. There's yeah. a lot of possibilities of issues that can go wrong in that supply chain. Mm -hmm. And having, you know, having a resource like a wholesaler or something like that, like us in Miami, as a last minute, as as well as your pre-order options, you know that's really yeah. that's a really good option. So and I think even some people now, you know, after um, COVID, is even relying on Miami more than they were before, because yeah. of all the challenges of, of even getting the flowers of the production. You know, there's not much, there's not much around like there used to be. It's hard yeah. to shop a box of Playa Blanca mm -hmm. right now. I mean, people yeah. falling back on the on the certainty of getting their flowers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And actually, that's that's a trend you see in more countries that 
the bigger uh, importers or wholesalers, uh, they take the risk and the smaller ones just start buying there again instead of uh, direct maybe from farms or from Holland. Uh, but you also have a farm uh, with Jet Fresh. Uh, yeah, Jet Fresh Flower Growers, we're in uh, Cotopaxi, Ecuador. But we're a boutique farm. We don't, we don't, we don't grow too many roses. You can see right here behind us. This is some of our some of our farm varieties. There, um, we are. We're focusing there on the quality. Uh, we're putting a lot of attention into every everything. Uh, it's been tough with COVID, but we've yeah. been focusing. We haven't been pinching. We haven't been uh, hurting our crops. We've been maintaining everything really well. So, uh, luckily with us, our flowers are still growing beautifully and coming in beautifully. Uh, we just launched our hippie psychedelic line which yeah. it's not new to the industry color enhanced roses are not new to the industry but we're, we're doing it we're bringing it in the, the jet fresh way so um we're, we're really going for it we got amazing colors we have professional rose artists working at the farm that are painting these roses we just put up a new studio full of art inside and out of the studio to inspire these guys while they work all day and um yeah the it looks great. I mean, uh, for the people, check it out uh, on their Facebook page. Uh, there are some uh, videos and, and pictures. It's, yeah, you, you do a fantastic job in, in terms of love every box. Yeah. <laughs> but it, this, yeah, is, this is actually a, a thing what you see a lot. I mean, um, it doesn't have to be that the flower chain will change, but the cooperation between the, the companies in the chain is also changing. Correct. Yeah. So, for Correct. example, we, we uh, developed the Charmelia flower. And uh, we choose to have one grower in Colombia, one grower in Europe, and we have an intense cooperation with them. So we we we, we yeah do everything together. The marketing, we we set up uh, the the, um, the marketing uh, brand, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's also a change. And doesn't have to say that the companies will, will uh, disappear or will uh, bought or something or, but the cooperation is changing. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah that, that's, that's for sure. definitely adjusting, and, and people are working with it to adjust with it, and that's how it's going to have to be for sure. Yeah, yeah. And I think also now yeah. you have a lot of uh, you have a lot of farms that are, are selling and disappearing. You know, a lot they're getting so, uh, almost like uh, all the supermarkets are are yeah, eating up all these farms. Yeah, yeah. That's the bigger get sure. bigger. Yeah, yeah, they get bigger and bigger for sure. Uh, continuing on your psychedelic uh, line, uh, I had the, the next one. Uh, to have more sales, we need more. We need brands. Uh, Wouter, you were talking about Charmelia. It's yes. also uh, uh, yeah, a brand, actually. Yeah. Uh, psychedelic roses. Uh, that's more of a brand. Do you think it that's uh, a better way of, of of selling flowers? Definitely. I think the more niches you have, the more relevant you'll be. You know, different stuff that you can in there, one box of roses or one box of, of filler flower, and then a few other niches that you have in there that they can find while they're buying everything at once definitely helps. Yeah, and it also comes down to who's buying the flowers because we sell both sides of the spectrum. We sell the well-known name brands like Rosa Flor and Alexandra Farms, these people that know the brand and know the reputation of that brand. And as well as the same, we sell you know other other not known name brands that are from different parts of the, uh, the world that maybe they need to spend a little less money on 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 price at the end of the day. So it really comes down to the customer what they're looking for. But having a brand name and having that recognition of a brand that they can that they can know and know the quality and trust it just by knowing the brand name, it's it definitely helps sales. Yeah, Walter, what do you think? Yeah, I think so too. Uh, there's, but there's one thing that um, that is really, uh, I wouldn't say frustrating me, but uh, we're talking now B two B. So actually, floors are companies. Um, we are at the beginning of the flower chain. Uh, we made a, a brand, and we put it all the way to the floors. The floors know the Charmelia very well, I think, uh, in general in Europe. Uh, but actually, the last uh, thing that we need to have is like we want to also push it to the consumers and eh? yeah. the ones who are buying the flowers and that's the part there it, where it doesn't work very well there are some, maybe some really flower lovers that know the charmelia but i think uh, most people don't know the charmelia like the normal consumers so yeah. i think we have uh, we have some work uh, to do over there yeah it's what hard it's hard to get you know people to, to catch on to new things 
but it's a grind. You get, you grind through it, and eventually, you know, it, it starts to work out. Yeah. But do you think, Wouter, it's uh, necessary to, to to let people know that it's Charmelia or another uh, flower? Uh, do you think there's already enough marketing going on for just all the flowers, so people buy more flowers? Yeah, but that's in general. I mean, it's always good to have in general uh, a marketing uh, uh, project in, for yeah. consumers. But I'm working for a company. Uh, Get Fresh is, is 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 working for Get Fresh, so you actually want to have that they buy your product at the end. I mean, that's, yeah. that's the whole goal. And uh, then you need to have uh, your marketing uh, ready for the consumers. I think. Yeah. Um, but I also can uh, imagine, for example, for florists. I don't know if you're watching any florists, but um, I mean, you have a lot of brands in the market, and uh, you're also with your flower shop. You want to brand your own flower shop. So I can imagine that you can combine everything. So that's uh, curious. I'm curious about how to combine it so that we have one or two or three brands who can yeah. be promoted by florists and next to that side that they can also uh, brand their own. Uh, yeah, because yeah, every every company has uh, wants to show its own style, own things, and yeah. Uh, I've been selling to, to supermarkets and then you make a bouquet and they say, okay, but it has to be this package. And the other one will say, okay, but it has to be like this or like this. Yeah. So yeah, you have to work together in it. But what I want to know, uh, maybe you know uh, the Flower Council in Holland. Uh, they have a budget next year of 8 million euros, something yeah. like that. Yeah, it was a less, more, way, way less than last year. Yeah, it was almost, I think it's 40% less. Yeah. Uh, but 8 million sounds like a lot, but we're talking about uh, a billion industry. Yeah. Uh, and we're talking about 8 million uh, euros. Is it enough or should we be more creative? Uh, because that 8 million is only spent in three countries in Europe. Yeah. Uh, while probably uh, the big companies are spending, uh, I will not say 8 million a day, but. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Coca-Cola and all those companies are spending yeah. way more, and all yeah. the, the gifts, and we're we're competing with with the flowers as a in a yeah in the gift market. Yeah, and we're not really promoting it, or I don't feel that we're. Of course, we all try do our best. Uh, you doing it at Van Zante, you guys doing it at uh, Jet Fresh. I'm doing it at Flower Circus, but still, the 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 whole floral industry. Uh, yeah, we could do more. That, that's what I believe. Yeah, that's actually the problem that you say. I mean, Coca-Cola is not cooperating with Pepsi to uh, promote their cola. I mean, uh, that's the thing. Uh, you have one organization who is now uh, promoting the flowers in general, um, but maybe that's not enough. Uh, and if we all have one flower that we want to promote with maybe 200 companies, and it's get really, uh, I wouldn't say messy, but it's, yeah, it's for the consumer or for the florist, it's not clear. Yeah. But everybody's selling more or less the same flowers to the same people, just put, putting yeah. a different name on it. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's cutthroat. It's, yeah. Well, in the end, I think we're all benefit when we, uh, in general, say, okay, Mother's Day is coming up, don't forget to buy flowers. Of course. Uh, or some other holidays, or uh, especially now as well. Okay, uh, cheer up. Uh, we'll give you flowers. Uh, you will feel better. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about more of that kind of marketing. I understand if we go deeper, then uh, you want it about it to be your flowers or jet fresh. You wanted people to buy from you. Yeah. 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 There comes the cooperation with the other companies. If you have, like in a flower chain, the same goal with one flower or two flowers or combined with other companies. I, mean, I can imagine that we can cooperate with a rose breeder uh, because, yeah, we don't have roses and they don't have uh, Charmelia. So and yeah. if we have, uh, uh, for example, wholesale and uh, florist, uh, a lot of florists who are buying it at wholesale that want to sell that and want to brand that, then you have all the same goals. Then you have a different way of cooperating uh, than we have right now. So that could be an, uh, an issue. Uh, well, Alison is saying, don't start me, John. You know what I believe. Maybe, Alison, it's good to, uh, we have an interview again. So you can, uh, you can uh, t 
tell what uh, what you believe. Uh, she's saying also connecting with florists and consumers. That's what I do. Uh, while uh, Kirsten van Dijk, van Dijk is saying, I agree that branding will help the consumer relate with the product. Uh, now go one step further and infiltrate other industries with images of branded flowers. Right. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a great point. You could definitely take advantage of you know social media and everything nowadays at people's at uh, people's grasp and use your flowers in more creative spaces. You don't even be trying to work on branding and marketing and stuff like that with florists. You know, there's tons of other people music videos, you know, you name it, that are in influencers or whatever, that you name it, that are things that yeah. are using flowers in a more diff in a different light that maybe that's what people need to do as far as getting their brands out in a more different, in a different manner, in a different manner, you know? Yeah. yeah. So uh, there's, an old, there's an old saying uh, that's heard a lot in Holland, flowers sell themselves. Why should we need marketing? Because if people see them, they're happy and they will buy it. Uh, <laughs> what do you guys think of this? I mean, I mean, off the top, it's like it's also marketing is possible. It's partly about who you're going to buy it from. You know, you have yeah. the box sells themselves. You have to decide who do you want to buy it from if they, everybody has that same flower. Right. So finding ways to be relevant and, you know, have a marketing team that's amazing, really helps you. And then have a sales team that's really engaged and, you know, that knows what's going on. Every morning here we have a sales meeting, 8 a.m. It might not be the most convenient time. But, you know, with what's going on right now, we have to do it. We have, we have, you know, majority of our sales working from home, just a few of us in the office. So we have a quick yeah. meeting every morning. Everyone knows what's going on. Everyone's staying engaged. Everyone knows what's new and exciting we have. You know, they always have all the information right at their fingers, you know, ready to go. And yeah. that really helps. Yeah, yeah that's for sure. Uh, well, Mike is saying the AFIF has uh, recently begun a new campaign to promote flowers in the USA. So that's 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 a good uh, thing. Well, uh, uh, you have to prepare uh, as well uh, soon because uh, uh, the blacks, the present and the future. So <laughs> that's, uh, that's great. What do you think, uh, Wouter? You probably also heard this this thing, uh, flowers sell themselves. So yeah, yeah it's, uh, a, it's a very Dutch saying. That's correct. Um, <laughs> it's, it, could be, it could be true, but I don't think so. I mean, if you see, um, you for have example, when COVID started. started. <laughs> so we wouldn't have our jobs if that was true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I mean, if you see, like, in the, in the, when, for example, when the COVID uh, started, a lot of bosses and companies bought presents for their, for their uh, colleagues, for their company to cheer them up at home. And uh, what you saw is that flowers became uh, a real cool thing to do that. Um, but afterwards, you have a peak and then it goes down. But we are now still at, at, at the same point. And for example, um, to be on the present and to know for the bosses like, uh, hey, we have to do that again. Um, we have to be on top of mind. And I think that's one of the main things that we have to, uh, to realize, that we have to be on top of mind. I mean, I like a, I like a bottle of wine as well. If I visit somebody, I I can buy that as well. But you have to be sure that you think, no, not a bottle of wine. You need to buy flowers. Yeah. And I think um, it's the same. It's the same with our company. I mean, we 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 sell young plants to growers, and uh, those flowers are not selling themselves themselves. Yeah. No, definitely. I mean, I think somebody's always going to call you for a box of red roses. But it's all those niches that we were talking about earlier that don't sell themselves. Yeah. That's the type of stuff that you need a, a sales team that, that's engaged to push out for you and a marketing team that's, you know, really staying, keeping you relevant. You know, you have calls every day from somebody, hey, I saw something on Instagram or I saw something on Facebook, you know, and you know, it, yeah. keeps, you, it keeps you different. We have another yeah. Dutch chain. <laughs> the thing you don't know, you can buy. <laughs> yep. There we go. Yeah, because that's another thing. Like you have different types of flowers. You have the same flower coming from different places and yep. coming in completely different quality, size, colors, and you need to be able to sell and market the difference of the two of them, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. You just know it's a lot want. about informing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So in, in the terms of uh let's uh let's stay uh with your business, uh Wouter. 
we need more new varieties do we need more varieties or or is it good to every uh, year have i don't know 50 new chrysanthemums 120 new roses uh, do we need that as a flower industry well what uh, what good is to tell is maybe a little bit the story behind i mean uh... In our breeding section, we can make uh, over a million crossings every year. So that means that we have a million new varieties every year. Um, then we have a testing protocol. And then maybe at the end, we have five new varieties that are tested at the growers. Yeah. So that means that we already have a really strict uh, way of selecting uh, new flowers. Um, and um, if, do we need more varieties? not always it's always a win-win for the grower and the market i mean uh, for example if we have a variety that you can grow quicker that is resistance for a disease or something that we can uh, grow more sustainable uh, that are all things that matter in the way if we if we introduce a new variety i would say if we have a new uh, for example we are market leader in in, in white single chrysanthemum here in holland um if we have one exactly the same white single flower grows exactly the same at the same time i don't think we need it but is it when it has any uh, contribution on the on the uh, uh, now on the on the market or the grower i think then we need it because it's an improvement of what's already there yeah yeah it's a great point especially we're the same way like for us as growers you know we we definitely look at the varieties that are most productive, that we can get the most the most plants, the most heads, you know, things like the purse. We have a small farm, so we can't grow, you know, so many of the same varieties. So we really need to be specific with things like that. Um, but at the same time, there's customers that we have that buy 25 year old varieties. You know what I mean? The varieties that have been tried and tested and, and, and proven that, and they won't, they won't deviate from that variety. So, yeah. It goes both ways, you know, kind of it, from as a grower standpoint, yeah, new varieties is definitely helpful and also being uh, it gives you a, as, on a sales standpoint, a little bit more to work with. You can offer a new something new and different than not every other company is, is selling. Um, so that's definitely a plus. Yeah. yeah. But, but I then can imagine you have customers when you have customers would still order a 25 year old variety that still exists. I know a lot of uh, people are also asking for uh, varieties that still don't or already don't exist for 10 years yeah right exactly yeah <laughs> makes it difficult as well <laughs> yeah. yeah but i can imagine for example sorry yeah. oh i can imagine for a florist uh, or something or a wholesaler as well that uh, like we are with four five six big uh, chrysanthemum breeders and they think like uh, again a new one but that has to do with the competition as well so i understand that we do we actually need more and new varieties it's a matter of competition and a matter of contribution to the market yeah yep. introducing a variety uh, with all the attention you need for it costs a lot of money as well yeah yeah, yeah. i mean to get out varieties are also more varieties also help for for substitutions i don't know if we need more new varieties there's a lot of varieties out there already you know but also it does help when the customer is looking for one rose you know that there's a few other that they could use that's kind of similar that can sub substitute that yeah yeah and, and what, what, what's the best way uh of introducing a new variety so so let's say Walter has a new astomeria or a rose or a, i don't know chrysanthemum how can he reach or how can other breeders or or other people or growers uh reach out to to the trading companies in the best way I think it's a good question for Jet Fresh. <laughs> I mean, you really got you really got bang it into their heads. Uh, getting repetition and getting that name in their face as often as you can definitely is is a plus. Um, putting the roses and the flowers in people's hands that are you know more or less tastemakers that that have some pull in the industry that people are following and you know they got the influencers on social media choosing the right people to work with, the, you know because there's tons of different levels of those influencers. There's ones that are floor space is ones that are just focused on social media. So there's a lot of ways to going about that. But um, for us, the name of the game is kind of like putting it in your face and keeping it there until you remember yeah. it. And then you need to take it aside out of your face. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you just let Mike shout it out for, uh, for a couple of times. <laughs> yeah. 
That's absolutely true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, Alison is saying the sensible way is to create a demand first. Uh, Alison is saying the sensible way. Oh, sorry. To, to create the demand first. Uh, Alison, that's true, but it's it's difficult, like uh, Wouter was saying. If you don't know that it is there, you cannot ask for it. So. Uh, yeah, I think I think if I, if I may speak for Alison and uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, like if, if you know about a variety and you uh, show it, for example, we do that also uh, to wholesalers, to um, um, florists, uh, retail change, chains. Um, if they know it's there and it's in a test phase, for example, um, we can also bring the grower with us. If there's a grower interested in the product, but he doesn't know really sure about the selling, about the growing, if he's, if he's in doubt, then we can do it like uh, Alison is saying, like we can get some demand from the market and then we combine it with the grower. That's uh, that's a thing really what we do as well. Yeah, it goes goes both ways. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, well, Mike Mooney is saying two reasons consumers in the USA uh, don't buy. One of them is cost. Uh, the second is uh, vase life. New variety uh, need to address this. Yeah, it's just like Walter was saying about having the growers picking varieties that are stronger, that are more resilient to disease, that grow more heads per 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 square meter, everything like that. Yeah, that's 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 a great point, absolutely. And I think yeah. that a lot of these readers are focusing on is finding varieties that that can withstand the conditions, that can last longer in the vase, that can travel yeah. better. For sure, it's hundred percent right. We're testing yeah. exactly on that. I mean, with new varieties, with all our crossings, we do. Uh, a simulation of transport, uh, we, and afterwards we do a base life test. Uh, we do it also with independent uh, parties, so we don't have uh, like um, that we are testing it because we think it's good, and then we afterwards we say, hey, we we tested it, so it's good. Uh, no, we have actually proved that it's that it's that's a good variety, or it's not. Maybe that can happen as well. Yeah, I think the market is changing a lot as well. That the, the world has uh, has not become bigger, but the flower sales. I mean. Uh, sometimes, Wouter, you've also been to Russia, uh, flowers in a truck for uh, two uh, weeks, sometimes <laughs> even more. Uh, as a breeder, you need to react on those uh, things as well. Uh, yeah, the, the flowers, okay, normally they traveled a thousand kilometers. Now they sometimes travel by truck 6,000 or even more kilometers. Yes. Uh, yes. Next thing is which is coming up or which is already happening, uh, sea transport. Yeah. That's probably also a thing that uh, some varieties will do well during sea transport, but the other ones uh, won't. Yeah. So that it's sometimes true. the market goes uh, goes quick, and uh, then the breeding. I mean, uh, Wouter, I've been at your uh, premises, and it was how many years for uh, uh, Astromeria from, uh, from developing the a new variety of Astromeria is eight to ten years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So if the market is changing quickly, uh, a breeder cannot yeah, yeah, exactly. keep on. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, while Alison is saying it's something, uh, something that we have done for years, trial it by exposing it on social media, listen to the feedback, and they will soon tell you if it's a winner. Uh, but it will also expose uh, where the particular market is. That's yes. uh, that's totally true, uh, Alison. Yeah. That's why. Uh, uh, probably a lot of breeders are on exhibitions all around the world as well to to ask this absolutely it's yeah. actually very hard to get feedback from the market sometimes especially when we are at the beginning of the chain uh yeah and especially if you say that something is new then they're already shouting yeah it's great <laughs> yeah. yeah uh well mike is saying more like rose breeders are looking for fragrance uh, and vase line uh, fragrance will be an added plus yeah, totally Definitely. true. They spent all that time taking the fragrance out of the roses. Yeah. Now they want to put them back in. Yeah, actually, they were just looking at how uh, how many they could harvest from a square meter, and that's where uh, the and how many uh, petals there were on the on the stem. That's and vase life uh, because most of the uh, or it used to be like that. Most of the fragrant uh, roses they didn't have a, a very well uh, vase life. Yeah, and the production. Yeah. So that was uh, was the big problem, but uh, still, when I started uh, in in the flower industry, 
everybody who was buying flowers or roses, the first thing they did was putting the nose in the it's roses. Still to try to it, it, goes. It, has to, yeah. it has to do with an experience as well. I mean, if you have a nice flowering, smelling rose at home, it's definitely way, it's worth way more than only just a rose, only just a rose, but just a rose. Yeah. That's like a normal reaction for almost anybody that picks up any flower. Just smell it first, almost. Yeah. Everybody does that immediately. Any flower. Yeah, yep. yeah that, that's so true. And I, I, a couple of weeks ago, I said, we're all like elderly people at the moment. We're all sitting at home. We're buying flowers and we see how they open. We, we like how they smell, things like that. Normally, we didn't have time because we, we run to the office and, and go to friends, things like that. And now we're sitting at a desk and you've got some flowers and you're looking up oh, that lily is opening or the rose is opening. Uh, you want to see things happening and, and, and to enjoy it. And if you have uh, the fragrance, that, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, we're always learning here, too. We always have like one bunch of something different um, up front in the office so we can see how they open and how the vase life is looking on different varieties. And that way we keep our sales team engaged as well with that. Yeah, that's yeah. really important. So uh, I want to talk with you also about sustainability. And uh, I've just said here, it's a trend. What do you think? Is it a trend? Is it something that, that will stay there or? No, it's not true. It's real. I mean, yeah, climate change is real. That's, that's, <laughs> people yeah. definitely, um, I guess, they, I guess, depending on sustainability necessarily doesn't always correlate directly with freight friendly packaging and transporting your flowers. You know, obviously that's why sea container freights and things like that are becoming options. Um, but yeah, it's definitely going to continue and people are going to have to focus more down the line on being more conscious of that. Um, like our, our farm is a uh, floor Ecuador certified plate, things like that. Like that's, that's definitely important. Yeah. Uh, and Wouter, is it something uh, what a breeder can can help doing? I mean, I heard that some so in, in chrysanthemums, they're trying out uh, chrysanthemums that can be grown with a lower temperature, which, which helps, of course, as well. Yeah. Yeah, we have several things. Um, when I see in our breeding section, we definitely are um, uh, trying to get uh, more sustainable uh, flowers in production. So that means that they are uh, actually a lot of chrysanthemum grows are already uh, growing their flowers only with the uh, biological treatment uh, for the insects and everything. Uh, in Alstroemeria, we actually have a, a grower who grows a variety of us. It's called the Mistral. It's uh, CO2 neutral, so he's um, putting trees back in the in the in the, in the forest uh, to uh, uh, compensate uh, the CO2. Um, but actually, Alstroemeria is already a really uh, sustainable flower. Um, yeah. So. I think it has to do with the uh, with the segments as well. I mean, when you're talking about retail supermarkets, they are really um, they are telling the growers that they must do it. And um, I can imagine for florists and for e-commerce, e-commerce is also a thing uh, that they can say. I mean, we have here Blue Mon in Holland, who was having a bio uh, bunch of flowers, only biological grown flowers. So. Is it a trend? I think it's not more. It's not really a trend anymore. I think it's now really uh, it's beginning to start to get bigger in the in the in the flower industry. Mm -hmm. and especially we as uh, breeders, we have to uh, take care of that, and we have to um, find um, sustainable growing flowers. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's really a thing. Now you see a huge demand for dried flowers. Yeah, a lot of dried flowers is is really big right now. Yeah, well, and I think yeah. that's a big part of it. Yeah, but it's also a way to like um, we have uh, Statis, for example, it's uh, one of the one of our biggest products, but it's really a good flower to to dry and um, to have uh, like uh, you don't have any waste anymore. I mean, you yeah, yeah. can't dry it, yeah. and you don't have any waste for the environment. So that's a win-win situation as well. Yep. Yeah. No, definitely. Yep. It's uh, totally true. It's uh, something that came back from, uh, I think, 30 years ago, but uh, most of you uh, were uh, <laughs> just running around. <laughs> they recycle trends all the time. Yeah, it yeah. is. 
I mean, I mean uh, in this uh, first quarter. Missed the first quarter. I'm here for the first trend. I'm here for the second one. Yeah. <laughs> and Me probably, too. Probably also the, the third one as well. <laughs> I heard it from my parents that they said, oh, status, it was in the toilet uh, back in the 60s. I said, oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, together uh, with lavender. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. But uh, now it's also combining fresh flowers and dried flowers. Really a nice thing and it looks wonderful. Yeah, it's a trend. I think uh, the painted flowers were also, uh, or maybe in some countries, it's still uh, a trend. Uh, depends a little bit, I think, on uh, where it is. Uh, yeah. But a lot of people don't know that uh, the paint used is also biological. Definitely. Yeah. So uh, that's good for people to, to know and to tell as well, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. It's good that there's more attention for flowers because people are sitting at home and buying flowers. But with that uh, good thing, you also get more questions about uh, is it sustainable? Uh, sustainable? Uh, where is it coming from? Is it flown in or things like yeah. that? Yeah, I mean, transport is also a big issue in the flower industry. Yeah, and then that's why. Uh, but but uh, if if you see the packaging, uh, yeah, that's already. I think we cannot get a much better packaging. If you see what's happening from Ecuador, how the roses are packed, yeah. uh, how the chrysanthemums are packed in Holland, uh, they they just have. There has to be one big guy. In the room who has to sit on the boxes otherwise they don't fit <laughs> yeah so um, uh, yeah yeah actually you're saying that but uh, for example uh, schiphol here is um it's the airport is yeah. um is uh, providing now reused uh, boxes of plastic so you can use them multiple times for your roses it will fly them in and out and uh, actually with uh, all the carbon and uh, how do you call it carton the the yeah. cardboard. cardboard sorry yeah yeah then you don't have to waste anymore. So there is still some developing to do on that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think in that because getting the flowers, especially coming all the way to here, you know, depending on which way they're going, an air, airplane or, or something like that, you know, um, you could have, you know, a, a package that a box that's that's sustainable but doesn't necessarily equal good quality in your flowers and maintaining, you know, the right temperature inside the box, the hydration on the stems, things like that. Um, that all, that all matters. So like you have to, it's not just a straightforward answer of just getting a, a, a sustainable box. You know, it's also about yeah. keeping flowers inside the box as best quality as we can. We use Chrysal's Arrive Alive in our yeah. roses. Um, yeah. You know, you can reuse the, 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 the sponge inside of that um, and, and use that for your, for, for more than one, uh, for more than one use. But, that keeps the flowers hydrating on the way on the way here. We also ship certain flowers in water, the Dutch style. We ship uh, like our garden roses from Alexandria and stuff. That's all shipped in Perconas. Um, so, yeah, we're very big on the wetter is better. Yeah, you know, so yeah. we try in as much Perconas and wet pack as possible. Um, you know, it's not great for the air shipments. You know, unfortunately, people have to ship on the air. But if you're on a truck, you know, it's great for you. If you have a two three day truck, you get the flowers they're already hydrated. And then the same with, like Ryan was saying, with uh, the arrival life from Chrysler, that's great too, because, you know, you have a little bit of a trip here from Ecuador, you could have a little bit of a delay here and there, and then you get it here and it goes on a truck for two, three, four days sometimes, you know, and that arrival life, it really helps keep the flowers hydrating the whole way. Yeah. You know, yeah. and the customer gets that and they can reuse it as well. So that's another added thing that we're doing as well, along with like ethylene paper and stuff like that in the packing you know so it's as much as much added packing that we can do to for the end consumer to have as much success as possible yeah and it's a great story to tell i mean uh, that you are working like that really good yeah i yeah. think in terms of packaging uh, the, the big advantage uh, in terms of packaging the big advantage of, of, of holland or of europe is the, the the standardization of of certain boxes so the boxes are more yeah. or less, of course, there are several boxes, but they're all the same uh, size. So it, e it is easier when you have a pellet that's totally filled with, with flowers. Uh, what you see more in the US is that, uh, or in South America, every grower has his own box. Yeah. Every grower has his own size. So uh, when shipping uh, pellets, there's so much air that is shipped. 
uh, yeah, I think that in terms of sustainability, it would be great if uh, if growers could agree on, on, I don't know how many boxes, but to standardize it and say, okay, this is a standard box for roses, this for, for 60 centimeters, for one meter, things like that. Yeah. On, on that on that statement, we at our farm, I think we have maybe five or six different box sizes, yeah. and that's just because certain varieties are bigger heads than other varieties, yeah. and we try not to force any flowers into the wrong box sizes because that affects the quality and affects the airflow that goes through the boxes when it's traveling. If you pack the boxes too tight, you get no 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 room for for air. You get no you get moisture that can develop inside the box. It can't escape. Um, there's a lot of issues that could come with that. So. That's that's why you're seeing so many different box sizes because every farm is growing the same roses but different. Yeah. You know, you go yeah. you go like Ecuador specifically. You have on one volcano the rose will grow completely different than on the other volcano, head size, color, and everything. So, yeah, um, yeah it really comes down to the farm itself and what they what what works best for them. But yeah, we have five five different. We we have the the eighth box, the small fifty stem boxes, all the way up to massive half boxes. So. I think yeah. if you have all one product, it's it's easier to have set box sizes. But when yeah. like roses and stuff, you know, some roses are a lot smaller than others. Also, if you only put a couple in a box, it's and you have a quarter box, it's going to affect your price as well. So you know, the little if the box is a little bit bigger, but you get 125 stems in the box, you know, it's also going to help the customer out on their price with the freight, especially with yeah. the freight rates how they are nowadays. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yes, but it, it would be nice. I mean, you have five boxes, uh, but somebody's picking almost the same, but the box is... Yeah, everybody's, um, off, yeah, everybody's off by yeah. a few centimeters here and there. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and in the end, the pellet is, is built up quite yeah, quite great. <laughs> I think it was uh, the, the trucking company or the tra transport company, Armolini, which was telling, I think, it. correct me if I'm wrong, I, he said it's it can be improved with 30%. I believe that yeah. I believe everybody can get more or less closer to the same same sizes, but that's also that's part of the problem is that people are are picking the box sizes because of the freight costs and the cubic freight rates, not yeah. based off of the flower size. We're doing the opposite. We're based picking our boxes based off of the flower size, and then working out the freight later. Also, like now we have like a smaller eight box because you know, for example, the color enhanced roses. We ship most of those in eighth boxes because, you know, it's a lot easier for a customer to take 50 stems in a freight friendly eighth box rather yeah. than, you know, a whole hundred stems of one variety. You know? Yeah, that's so totally true. Ways, uh, we're adapting. No. Uh, Kirsten Van Dyke is uh, ask, uh, saying uh, water uh, conservation is key for sustainability. Uh, what can our industry do to align with water uh, conservation practices? That's actually a very technical question. I think it has to do with two things. The water comes down from the volcano. We have a reservoir there. We have uh, a eco-friendly uh, hydration system to hydrate the plants at the right temperature, at the right conditions, right minerals. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a pretty technical question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this do with two things actually. I think that, uh, that what you described as well, uh, it's how you get your water, uh, but also what does a plant need uh, to grow their flowers. And uh, actually, due to the COVID virus, we had uh, in one of our testing greenhouses, we had uh, we took uh, all the we took the water out, but actually the flowers were still growing. So actually, it was a good test. Um, but what you can see from that. Um, is that there are some varieties that grow very well with less water. The production numbers are lower, but you have to see. Uh, you have to find a good balance between that. But we also yeah. like uh, breeding on that. I mean, uh, the less water it needs, and water is going to be an issue in the in, in the future. Um, yeah, the better it is for the environment. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, uh, there are a lot of uh, growers in Holland who already have a closed uh, circuit. Yeah, think, uh, definitely. Uh, yeah. I know for some medium, uh, they need to have a closed circuit. So they reuse the water all the time. Uh, with tulips, it's the same. They just yeah. clean it. And also with all the uh, nutritions they add, they measure it again and see how much nutrition they need again. So that's, uh, yeah, you, you can't get more natural friendly. They uh, actually reuse water. Yeah. 
Uh, Johan Heemskerk is saying, uh, nice to hear that sustainability guru uh, Sir David Attenborough has praised the horticultural, uh, horticultural, that's where you get to it when he doesn't write it. <laughs> horticulture in, in the Netherlands for their sustainable efforts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have a huge, huge production per square meter uh, in our greenhouses. We are a small country, but we are the second uh, producing country in agriculture things. Like, yeah, uh, across the board, you, you guys are doing it bigger and better out there than everybody. Yeah. Across yeah, the board. Of, Ameri of course, America first. But hold on a second. <laughs> just going to the auction and seeing the process and seeing all that firsthand, like it really opens your eyes and and being have, being I because I go to all the, the farms too and, and and try to capture videos and stuff and just yeah. seeing how it's done out there, it's it's a whole nother level for yeah. sure. That's yeah. night and day. But we need to. Okay. Uh, yeah. one last question uh, for the three of you. Uh, what do you see in the future? What what what's going to be the main change in the in the floral industry, or what's uh, your goal to change in the floral industry? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. You know, I think the way things are going, you know, for example, for event planners, I think they're going to have to you know more adapt more as well. Don't get stuck on one certain variety of rows or one certain this. You know, they're going to have to be able to take substitutions and sell substitutions when they're selling their events. You know, I think people are going to continue to rely on Miami as, you know, fill-ins and more of their weekly orders as well. And I think the florists are going to continue to stay relevant. The mom and pop shops, I think they're going to keep thriving. You know, people are going to continue to send flowers constantly as, you know, we're not traveling as much. You had a good one for Christmas, you said. Um, you know, Christmas could be huge for these florists. You know, because Christmas is a big traveling holiday, and I don't think a lot of people are going to be doing that traveling this year. You know, yeah. so that that could be huge for them. But that's my that's where I think it's going. I think the marketing, you guys, you know, are going to continue to just excite everybody and keep people engaged in flowers. You know, it's really it really helps the way the marketing is turning. I think you guys are sparking something with all new companies, and everybody's getting on board now. And I think that just helps the industry in general. Yeah. Great. yeah this has always been a this market's always this industry's always been personal very person to person industry um and i think it's going to stay that way um definitely technology is going to help you know connect people uh keep people connected keep people in the loop i think things like this these live streams are are, are definitely going to help um for sure it'll some of them will fall off you know the people that have been doing it not everybody's going to keep on doing them but the ones that are doing well keep doing well because it's definitely showing value to a lot of people um, and digitalization coming around obviously everybody's going to get more and more involved with online sales e-commerce online pickups you know you name it that's definitely just going to grow more and more in the industry just because that's that's everywhere you know it's a crowd that's not just flowers that's any industry yeah um, no, that's but, true. And especially with all the niches like we were talking about before just you know keep adapting with the niches and growing you know finding different ways to stay relevant it's a big it's a big industry there's a lot of there's a lot of people out there buying flowers you know like we could all you know we could all fit and sell sell flowers together you know it's yeah yeah that's for sure and, uh, so Walter was uh, yeah you yeah, would well, think about, like it. about the question one fun fact is that, uh, like uh, like you told, uh, it's a family thing. It's uh, it's a, it's a very small world, and actually, uh, for example, colleagues with uh, that my father worked with, I work now with their sons. So uh, it's the same with you guys. It's uh, it's very good uh, to see that, and it's still happening. It's still a small world. That's going away, uh, right? You don't see so much of father father's family uh, yeah. keeping in the business. That's yeah. we're fourth we're fourth generation, but I don't know many people that are. You know they're still getting that that are that yeah. like their yeah. their their kids are not a lot of not joining the industry too much. Yeah, but I think for me the goal is in in the end um, in the in the future to uh, um, I like to work with the companies that are already in in the flower chain. I like to uh, have the same goal. Uh, that's why I want to cooperate with those companies. And uh, at, in the end, uh, I want to have. Uh, like uh, every house uh, uh, a vase of flowers i mean everybody's happy with flowers everybody likes it uh, but we maybe we're not 
telling the story always the right way or we can do it different or it's, it's also told uh, maybe we have to cooperate with uh, parties outside the flower chain yeah. and that are things that i uh, i uh, i like to do i want to see and uh, yeah i want to cooperate with everybody who has the same uh, same uh, picture same image uh, for him yeah. So. yeah i think this is something with which uh, you guys and the whole new generation is doing they're not just looking at their competitor but also looking in other uh, industries what's happening over there we're not they're not like this we're not in a tunnel it's like okay this is happening in the, in the fruit sector this is happening with with computers or apple is doing it that way maybe we can try it as well yeah definitely that's, that's how we should be doing it yeah definitely want yeah, yeah. Because this industry kind of is, uh, well, at least on the U.S. side, has been a little bit, a little ahead of, behind the curve as far as technology goes. Like a lot of people still to this day don't even have a website. You know what I mean? Like so, in Holland as well. But yeah, seeing other people are doing in other industries yeah. and applying that to work for you is makes perfect sense. I don't know who it was, but there was once a wise guy who said, "Never waste a good crisis." But that's what you see with this. I mean, yeah. the live streams are there. Websites are coming, social media is coming up more and more. Eventually, yeah. We, so it, 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 it starts. It starts. We're getting there. Yeah. There you go. Just an extra way of selling flowers and uh, yeah, let's let's use it. Yes, definitely. It's yeah. free too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. It was great talking to you. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Kevin, uh, yeah. Uh, couldn't uh, join us, but uh, maybe we can do this uh, soon again with Kevin uh, that time. Yeah, for the next one. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you, uh, everybody, for watching as well. And I uh, hope to see you uh, next week. Next week, uh, we have a Gerbera grower from Holland who uh, has a very spe special packaging as well uh, and a very sustainable grower. So, uh, quite uh, excited to, to hear his uh, story next week. So, uh, hope, uh, hopefully, we'll see you next week. Uh, thank you everybody for watching and uh, guys thanks you thanks uh, for joining thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. bye